Imagine the vibrant chaos of Mulberry Street on a summer afternoon. Sunlight glints off overflowing cannolis in bakery windows. The aroma of freshly brewed espresso hangs heavy in the air. A group of elderly men play bocce in a nearby park, their laughter a joyous counterpoint to the rhythmic thwack of the bocce ball. But a subtle dissonance creeps in as we near the Ravenite Social Club. Conversations hush slightly, a flicker of unease crossing faces. This seemingly ordinary storefront, with its chipped paint and faded awning, became the nerve center for John Gotti's dark empire, casting a long shadow over the warmth and laughter of Little Italy. The Ravenite story stretches back to the Roaring Twenties, a time of flappers and speakeasies. Established as the Alto Knights Social Club, it was a boisterous gathering place for the local Italian community. Over the years, it transformed into a trendy night spot, a meticulously crafted facade that attracted a diverse clientele. Imagine a young F. Scott Fitzgerald, famed for his tales of the jazz age, holding court at a corner booth. Surrounded by aspiring writers and artists, oblivious to the shadowy figures conducting hushed exchanges just across the room. Newspaper articles boasted of literary gatherings and art exhibits, further solidifying the club's reputation as a respectable night spot for the city's creative minds. Little did the public know, these events were likely orchestrated, a carefully cultivated image designed to mask the true nature of the club's clientele and its web of intrigue. Choosing the Ravenite as his headquarters was a bold move by Gotti, a man who reveled in the spotlight and thrived on a carefully crafted image. It was a duality of power and paranoia. On the one hand, it was a calculated display of power, a way to taunt law enforcement while operating in plain sight. Gotti reveled in the notoriety, the whispers and speculation that surrounded the club. He held court in the Ravenite, surrounded by loyal associates, a king holding court in his very own public castle. On the other hand, some speculate it stemmed from a deep-seated paranoia, a need to be surrounded by trusted associates for a sense of control. Regardless of his reasons, the impact was undeniable. The Ravenite became a symbol of Gotti's power, a place where he could conduct business and hold court with an air of impunity. It cast a constant shadow, a subtle reminder that beneath the veneer of friendly conversation and clinking glasses, a different world thrummed with ruthless efficiency. For those in the know, the Ravenite became a place to be wary, a stage where power plays unfolded under the guise of casual gatherings. Even for oblivious patrons, there was a certain intangible tension, a sense of something lurking beneath the surface. Now let's peel back the layers of the carefully constructed facade. The FBI, ever watchful, became increasingly suspicious. Unusual patterns emerged, late night meetings that stretched into the early hours, a constant stream of known Gambino associates entering and leaving through a discreet back door, deliveries of unusually large quantities of liquor out of proportion to the reported number of patrons raised further suspicion. The Ravenite, it turned out, was a symphony of criminal activity disguised as frivolity. Backrooms thrummed with the hushed tension of high-stakes gambling rings. Thick envelopes exchanged hands with practiced ease, the clinking of unseen coins a chilling counterpoint to the club's lively jazz soundtrack. In dimly lit corners, ruthless drug deals were conducted with practiced efficiency, a stark contrast to the overflowing ashtrays and half-eaten plates of pasta on nearby tables. Even casual card games became a front for extortion schemes planned with calculated cruelty. Threats were veiled but unmistakable, a chilling reminder of the consequences of non-compliance. Waiters, caught between their desire for a good tip and the fear of mob retaliation, became unwilling accomplices in this elaborate charade. The Ravenite transcended its physical form. For the Gambino family, it became a symbol of dominance, a place where power was wielded with an iron fist and rivals were kept in check through a carefully orchestrated web of fear and intimidation tactics. High-ranking associates served as living reminders of the family's reach, their presence a constant, chilling weight in the air. The atmosphere was a curious mix, oblivious patrons enjoying a night out, those who understood the unspoken threat that hung heavy in the air, and those who actively participated in the criminal activity. It was a masterfully crafted web of tension and fear, a constant reminder of the power dynamics that lurked beneath the surface of everyday life. 
For some patrons, the brushed shoulders with danger might have added a thrill to the experience, a taste of the underworld without true consequence. For others, it was a constant source of unease, a nagging feeling of being watched and judged. The ever-present threat of violence hung heavy in the air, a silent enforcer that ensured cooperation and compliance. The FBI wouldn't be deterred. They meticulously infiltrated the Gambino family, employing cutting-edge, for the time, surveillance techniques. Tiny microphones were painstakingly planted within the Ravenites' walls, a risky gamble that threatened to expose their entire operation. The tension was palpable as they waited, hoping to intercept a single crucial conversation, a single sentence that could crack Gotti's meticulously constructed facade. And then it happened. A conversation about a planned operation, a single damning sentence led to a major arrest, a domino that toppled the first in a chain reaction, ultimately bringing down Gotti's house of cards. Law enforcement swooped in, the FBI raid shattering the illusion of normalcy that had shrouded the Ravenite for so long. News cameras flashed, capturing the dramatic scene as patrons were ushered out in confusion. The once powerful facade crumbled, exposing the dark heart that had beat within the Ravenite's walls. The Ravenite's dark secrets were exposed, shattering its reputation and leaving a legacy of corruption. Gotti and his associates faced the full force of the law. The once glamorous social club became a monument to the arrogance of organized crime, a stark reminder of its inevitable downfall. Today, the location stands as a testament to the past, a cautionary tale of how seemingly ordinary places can harbor dark secrets. Some might say it's a forgotten relic, a faded echo of a bygone era. Tourists with a morbid curiosity snap photos, a reminder of the dark underbelly that once pulsed beneath the surface of Little Italy. Others, unaware of the club's history, might wander in for a drink, oblivious to the chilling secrets embedded in the floorboards. The allure of the dark side persists, a constant reminder of the fight against organized crime that continues even today. However, the story of Little Italy doesn't end here. The Ravenites' fall from grace marked a turning point for the neighborhood. Law enforcement's crackdown on organized crime allowed legitimate businesses to flourish. Today, Little Italy is a vibrant testament to the enduring spirit of its community. Bustling family-run restaurants serve up heaping plates of pasta, open-air cafes spill out onto the sidewalk, and the laughter of children playing bocce fills the air once more. The scent of fresh bread and roasting espresso mingles with the joyful shouts of a community that has reclaimed its heart. While the Ravenite may stand as a chilling reminder of the past, Little Italy has emerged stronger a beacon of hope for the future. The echoes of Gotti's reign may linger, but they are slowly fading, replaced by the vibrant sounds of a community thriving anew. The spirit of resilience that once allowed immigrants to build a life in a new land is evident once more, ensuring that Little Italy's future will be filled with the sounds of laughter, family, and tradition. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. It's London Rain!